Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're making a different kind of video. We are going to talk about Walmart manga purchases. Now, I guess in 2023, it's common. I know a lot of people know about it. It's not new. I'm not treading new grounds here, but it's still pretty fun to me that up until these past couple of years, you wouldn't have seen that. And depending on where you live, you don't have access to every single store. I don't have a Barnes & Noble. I don't have a Target or a Books A Million or whatever store you might be thinking of. Walmart, love them or hate them, gotta give them props for wanting to hop on the trend. It benefits us in the long run. Even if you don't like the corporation, it's pretty cool to see this hobby, this love that we have for manga grow and expand into what it is today where you can just walk into a regular Walmart and get Viz Media releases, Kodansha, Seven Seas, stuff like that. So so today on the channel, I'm going to show you 10 of my favorite purchases that I made at Walmart. In no particular order, we are going to begin here with Tokyo Revengers Omnibus Volume 1. This is a two-in-one from Seven Seas Entertainment, and I was shocked. Nowadays, you can find Tokyo Revengers anywhere, but I was so excited to see such a hyped release available pretty much right on release date, and I quickly grabbed it. This is a great delinquent, time travel, action, dramatic story. I know some people were a little cold on the ending, but I have to enjoy what I've read so far and what I've seen from the anime and this has that fun combination of mixing sci-fi with drama and action and all that that I think appeals to quite a large number of people so yeah really cool to see this and I was happy to pick it up and at least have some of Tokyo Revengers on my collection now this next one is not rare by any means I walked in at Walmart one day and there it was they started selling my dress up darling obviously because of the popularity of the anime and this volume five, I think I chose this one here to represent the whole series because I found the rest of the volumes online and volume five was out of stock. So I had to wait and it just happened to show up at Walmart, which I thought was hilarious to see a quote unquote spicy series like this at uh, store shelves. Next up, we got The Valiant Must Fall, Volume 1 from Yu Aida. This is also a Seven Seas release. It came out early 2023. I really don't know why I skipped it when it first came out. And I think it may have been a budget issue or something, so I just let it pass. And I think like three months afterwards, I found the first book which surprised me. Again, you typically spot the big releases, the Shonen Jump stuff. You see like uh, Viz Media releases like uh, Chainsaw Man, My Hero Academia, Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen, a little bit of One Piece here and there, One Punch Man, Mob Psycho. That is what you think of when you think, oh, mainstream manga, which is wild to say, at a mainstream store like Walmart. You don't expect The Valiant Must Fall, Volume 1. Now this next one is highly underrated. This is Box of Light, Volume 1 from Seven Seas. It spoke to me, it's eerie, spooky, but in a fun way. And it pokes at your curiosity, because this is a story about a convenience store set in what I would assume would be limbo, in between uh, the afterlife and real life, where wandering souls go in, and I guess their last moments before passing or coming back to Earth are visual as them walking into a convenience store and possibly making their last purchase ever or returning back from the store and going back to the world of the living. I highly recommend it. I know I talked about it on one of the videos if you want to search for it on the channel. The art may not be for everybody at first glance, but stick with it because I do think it has a very unique charm to it. Next up, we got Bomba. This, again, surprised the heck out of me because, like I mentioned before, Viz Media Books, check, okay, cool. But in what world would you have told me that Walmart would be selling Osamu Tezuka books? That just blew my mind. So I had to pick up Bomba, and I did a video on it as well, if you want to check it out. Next up, we got Nana. Here we have Volume 1. I never expected to see a Shoujo Beat book at Walmart. 
certainly not Nana of all series. And that is one of my most desired books to own from the Shoujo Beat label. I have seen Nana the anime, but I've never had the chance to read the manga or own it. So yeah, even though I know they're not going to put out any other volumes, I'm pretty sure this was just a one-off. I will happily grab this and support the series. And yeah, uh, one day if I have the room for it, I will happily continue collecting this amazing series. A three-in-one package deal here. We got Bakemonogatari Volume 1, 2, and 3. Now, for this, I was shocked because... Bakemonogatari tends to lean heavily on the fanservice side when it comes to the girls on the series and I appreciate that this is out there for those of us that really can't afford the anime because if you'd want to collect it you would be looking at between a thousand to maybe 1500 bucks to get the whole thing some of those blu-rays are horribly out of print and really rare and most of them i think all of them are aniplex releases so <laughs> good luck collecting that i'm sure you can stream most of it not all of it which is a bummer and i'm not a light novel reader so i'm, I'm not going to pick up the box sets i think this is the happy medium for my uh, curiosity when it comes to bakken Monogatari. Burn the Witch from Tight Kubo. I really wanted this because I don't have room for big shonen jump stuff, so I don't own Bleach or Naruto. I do have a good chunk of One Piece, but that's an exception. So I really wanted to own something from Kubo, and Burn the Witch happened to be it. We had the movie adaptation of this manga back in 2020, and they released the physical version. Unfortunately, like I showed you here, the slipcover here is falling apart. I need to re-glue it, but I haven't gotten to it, so that was a bummer. But great to own modern Kubo art on my shelf the Jojo 6251 art book. This is a phenomenal way to own a piece of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. This is such a long series that I have no room and no plans whatsoever to get it, but I do love the franchise. I have the anime on Blu-ray. I enjoy the show. I've read some of the manga. This book is not just an art book. It has interviews, character profiles, and it's sort of a data book at the same time, which is great for me because I'm not typically a fan of art books. Yes, they are great. I love them. But for some reason, I don't find myself revisiting these books often. So I stay clear of getting art books. But this is an exception because I do like the character profile stuff. I love guidebooks for anime and manga. And this is great. Part three and part four are my favorite parts of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. So I was happy to own this, which covers up to part four and uh, just jam packed with wonderful illustrations illustrations and the interviews with Hirohiko Araki just really makes this book a complete package and worth owning if you're a fan of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. And here we are with my favorite purchase at Walmart. It is Old Boy Deluxe Edition Hardcover Volume 1 from Distrito Manga. It is in Spanish and I know that is what caused this to not be as hyped as it could have been. It has to be released in English for it to cause an uproar, and that's a little disappointing. But it just so happens that I'm bilingual, so I have no issues reading this. This is a phenomenal edition, really well put together. The art looks great in oversized pages, large trim size, and it's just a legendary series that is out of print from Dark Horse. So I was really happy to see this. I couldn't believe it. I had to Google it real quick. I'm like, no way. Is this really what I think it is? Am I going to grab old boy here? Really cool. Definitely my favorite find so far at Walmart. There you go. 10 of my favorite manga finds at Walmart. What an age that we're living in where we can find these awesome books at any store. That is fantastic. And I hope you guys have some luck finding your favorite books as well. That's going to be it for now. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section what are some of your favorite manga finds in brick and mortar stores. Looking forward to reading those comments on that. And that's going to be it for now. Thank you everybody for tuning in. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.